All right, welcome everyone uh, to help. We're stuck in a box. This is the third episode of the new designed podcast. For now, I'm here with my buddy Nito. Nito, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Nito Duancra, and I am, well, I guess reasonably old. <laughs> 46, 47 years old. Um, work with my buddy here at Taco Bell. And um, I like playing video games, and I like putting together computers, and I like watching a lot of anime, which the last bit, very unhealthy. I wouldn't advise it. <laughs> uh, so my buddy Nito here has been planning for a little while to start a YouTube channel where he does Let's Plays or possibly, you know, restoration of devices. So whenever he does start that, I will put the link down in the description of this video. So stay tuned for that. Oh, dude. <laughs> so let's just start off with, you know, a little bit, uh, like, uh, how are you doing today? Uh, actually, today has been a pretty good day. I mean, a uh, friend of mine, uh, Sarah, not um, either of the Sarahs that we work with, uh, had foot surgery today. And luckily it went swimmingly. And the beautiful part about this is she's actually even more mobile in her boot at this point in time than she was before. Huh. It's kind of interesting. Usually oh, it's like yeah. the other way around. <laughs> yeah, usually it is. But at least in this case, she's got uh, great mobility. And uh, yeah, she's going to be stuck in it for like six to eight weeks. But, you Damn. know. A long yeah. ass fucking time. Yes, it is. But then again, it takes that long ass time to heal everything up to a uh, good extent to where, you know, they feel safe that she can put weight on it again. Yeah. yeah. I know how that feels. Like, uh, my girlfriend, Ariel, she had sprained her foot a little while back. Um, so when she we would go down to Columbia to, you know, because she, every, once a week, we had to go down there for one of her classes. Right. It, it was hell watching her kind of struggle to, to get to and from class. Because I felt really bad because it was like, you know, the this parking spots were few and far between sometimes. So she kind of had right. to walk such a long distance to get to class. And then all the way uh, back just like 40 minutes later. Uh, yeah. Dang. And there isn't a darn thing you can do about it at that point in time. And that just sticks you off even more. Yeah. Because at a little for a little while she had to use um some crutches that my family has had from previous foot surgeries. <laughs> I gotcha. So yeah, that's one thing about my family is that we it runs in our family that some of us will have messed up feet. And so mm -hmm. my mom and my sister both had an extra bone in their feet. Oh. And so they had to get surgeries to get both the bones out. And that takes a while. Now, one thing is about about that is the American school system. Yeah. Sometimes, depending on the school, you know, better schools may have different rules. But at least for the high school that we went to, did not see having surgery as a valid reason for an excuse. So they counted it against her attendance. Oh, and she geez. was gone for a good, like, two weeks, two or three weeks, you know? Right. And then when she got back, she had to use the elevator in our school because she was on crutches. And even then, the nurse was like, well, I know that this pass that you gave to the office is from the office, you know, saying that you need an elevator key, but I'm going to need the original pass. And Because so, huh. the nurse was a bitch. And so uh, she had to go back through and, oh my. you know, deliver the pass back and forth. But that nurse was just horrible. Like, I had a friend who has diabetes. His name's yeah. Zach. Love the guy. He's he's super funny. And so, whenever he first got diagnosed, he, um, like a little sign of, like, how upbeat about it he is, came over to our house, and yeah. he had lost a good, like, 40 or 50 pounds, you know, over the summer. Oof. And yeah. so, my mom was like, what do you do? And he's like, nothing. I just, you know, mow lawns and then sit around and drink a two-liter soda and eat a whole bag of chips while I game. But then he had found out that he was diabetic, so that changed, like, everything he had to do. And so this nurse, he had to leave Jim early because 
he had tested very low on his blood sugar, right? So he had to go right. to the nurse to get a snack so that way it would boost it back up or else exactly. he could potentially die. And right. so he gets there and he didn't bring the kit because he had already tested himself and he had had this, he had diabetes for, I think, two years now at this point. Right. And she didn't, she said she didn't believe him. So she made him walk all the way back to the locker room by himself and then grab his things and then walk all the way back to the nurse's office by himself so he could test it, test himself in front of her. Uh... And I was like, dude, all he needed was like some crackers, some like fruit snacks. Yeah. You, you're really going to be that stingy? Like, it, it was annoying. Yeah, and I know exactly how stringent these guys are when it comes to uh, bringing outside food and everything like that. Yeah. Mm. It's ridiculously stupid. Right. But, I mean, like, come on. The guy is diabetic. The simple fact of the matter is he's not lying. He's just crashing. And if he's crashing, then he needs to take care of it. It's not just... It, it's not, oh, he's just pleading for attention and stuff and right. he doesn't want to no come on guys stop automatically thinking the worst just because of the fact that you're dealing with a bunch of kids who do honestly make things interesting it was so so stupid i was like he just needs something to eat real quick like it's right. that simple oh yeah, it's amazing how, what big heads adults get when they're around kids. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> well, I don't know if I ever told you the story um, of, like, H Halloween at my high school yeah. was, wasn't a big thing. Like, people, you know, didn't wear costumes, of course. So I was like, I didn't know if it was against the rules or not. So I wanted to email my, my principal about it. Because I was like, you know, I want to wear something stupid to school. Because right. I think it'd be funny. Because, like... During one year in Spirit Week, in my freshman year, I wore a toga and a lampshade for frat hey. day, right? And so everybody legit was just, like, looking at me every day, all day, and I was like, you know what, this is fine. I'm get I get a lot of attention from this, not that I needed it. I just think it's funny that people are like, who the fuck is that kid wearing a lampshade and a toga? <laughs> <laughs> and so during Halloween one year, I think it was my junior year, yeah. I emailed my, my principal, and I was just like, so... What are the rules on costumes during Halloween? And he's like, okay, as long as we can see your face, it's okay. So I was like, oh, yeah. so this costume that I found is not okay? And it was an inflatable T-Rex costume <laughs> that I was going to wear around? And he's like, yeah, I, I don't think that's going to work. And I was like, dang, okay. Uh -huh. So then I sent him a picture... <laughs> And I, I'm messing with him the whole time. And I sent him a, a picture of, like, a sumo wrestler costume, like, one of the big inflatable ones. And I was like... Oh, yeah. I was like, well, this one you can see my face. Would this be okay to wear to school? <laughs> he was like... He was like, um... No, I, I don't think so. I think that might cause, like, a thing, like... It's going to be, like, a nuisance to get around the hallway. And I was like, well, you know, it says it inflates and deflates within 60 seconds, so... I could do it during passing period, like trying to sell the point. And he's yeah. like, no, probably not. If you really want to wear a costume, wear something else. And I was like, okay, but final idea. Here's this. And I have some of those big, like, wobble balls, like the the balls you can get in and then, like, people play soccer in them. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Those, yeah, those. I sent a picture of that. I was like, see, this one, I can roll down the stairs to get to my next class easy as pie, I'll get there even faster than usual. And he, he goes, he legit goes, all right, I'm going to need to have a talk with you in my office. Oh. <laughs> he was like, he was like, if you show up to school in either three of those costumes, you will get in trouble. Oh. And I, I was like, damn, dude. Just want to have a little fun. True. I bet you he was probably having nightmares of a <laughs> uh, student basically barreling down one of the um, <laughs> stairwells in a ball and just taking a tumble and, oh, jeez. Afraid I, of multiple I, I mean, lawsuits like, yeah. on his hands. Oh, yeah. And unfortunately, in that case, yeah, I, I completely understand how they're, you know, kind of going, no, and... Uh, and uh, <laughs> but still, 
at the same time, I gotta admit, I I get the feeling you had uh, you were just having some fun with. The dude oh, I was having you. a blast. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's... I started emailing him at like seven a.m. You know, and I didn't stop emailing him until I got out of school the same day. So, so every class I was in, I just took out my Chromebook and I started typing away emails, just like back and forth with them until eventually he goes, all right, so you're going to talk with your teacher and you're going to come see me, you know, in my office. And I was like, well, shit. I was like, you know, how much trouble could I technically get in for emailing him? And obviously it wasn't any trouble. So I was fine. But I was exactly. like, exactly. That, that was always one of my things. I like to push the boundaries of like messing with teachers. Yeah. So, like, okay, this is going to sound horrible, but in my English class, we had to do, um, we had to do, like, a project on To Kill a Mockingbird. Now, we could either write poems or whatever, right? Like a story right. or some shit like that. So, I decided to choose to do a playlist about the movie. So, like, choose songs right. that have different meanings, you know? And so, of course, I get up there and do my normal spiel. And the the end product that my teacher had originally saw was different from the one that I had presented during class. And I had added two more songs in there. I can't remember what one of the songs was, but they're both like joking songs, you know. Right. But then the second song that I had in there was Hit Me With Your Best Shot um, to explain when one of the characters gets shot and killed. Right. Oh. And, and she legit just looked at me and she was just like... Oh, okay. I see the symbolism. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I was just trying to make a joke. I wasn't. And I ended up getting extra points for it, but I was like, that's just stupid. Oh, no, I hear you on that. It's about as silly as, uh, what was it? I remember back in the 90s and 2000s, they were um, remaking a lot of Shakespearean plays and giving them a modern twist and everything like that. Mm. Basically, uh, Shakespeare in modern times. Right. And um, the one that got the most acclaim was Romeo and Juliet. And it was, well, let's just say symbolism there. Uh, imagine a gang member carrying two pistols, <laughs> one of them engraved with the word sword, and the other one engraved with the word dagger. <laughs> you know? And, I mean... Wait, is that yeah, the one with Leonardo that's... DiCaprio? Yes, that was uh... the one with Leonardo DiCaprio. That was the one that pretty much <laughs> did shoot him into superstardom. And, I mean, it was... A, uh, that was like a 90s young person's mess of a... Uh, <laughs> of a Shakespearean experience but yeah i mean dude it symbolism is symbolism but you don't have to hit me over the head with a hammer as far as that's right. concerned and sometimes it should be used in a joking manner and unfortunately i do believe that <laughs> the people who were producing and directing that movie we're being deadly serious. Oh my god. They yeah, Which they makes it even funnier. <laughs> they took it way too seriously with that movie. Mm. I think they thought yes, they were gonna they win did. like multiple, multiple Oscars and everything for their performances there. Oh dude. Yeah. Um let's just say it was definitely not a Titanic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which funnily enough, yet another movie with him in it. <laughs> yeah, poor Leonardo DiCaprio didn't get his first Oscar until um, the one movie where he was out in the snow and actually got hypothermia during the process yeah. of filming. Yeah. And, like, didn't he have to also eat raw meat? Like, he actually had to sacrifice parts of his health to get a freaking Oscar because every year that he was in a movie where his acting was incredible, another movie would come out that was just slightly better. Right. You know, and that... That's an ugly thing, and oh, dude, I mean, you know it's terrible whenever someone has to s sacrifice bits of themselves just to get attention. Yeah. That's, oh, he he was definitely done wrong early on in his career. He's definitely a great actor and deserves way more credit than he's given. I, yeah, this is very true. 
This is very true, but let's just say uh, Romeo and Juliet did not help <laughs> yeah, that, that much. <laughs> that wasn't the performance that got him anything, besides no. his start to stardom. Mm hmm. No. Oh. Now, that teacher, though, for my English class was. Yeah. Let's just say sexist for the most part. Oh. Um, she did. She did prefer the girls in our class over the guys. So she would let the girls talk and whatever. And like one girl, she would legit just let her sing and all this other stuff. And I was like, okay, do what you want to do. I don't really care. But the second that I legit was asking for some of my peers to review one of my papers, she moved me across the classroom uh -huh. because I was talking. By the way, this was like independent work time. I was like, I don't know why I wasn't allowed to talk. Meanwhile, there were still girls in the back talking that she had no problem with them talking. I was like, okay. And then I went to talk about, you know, the like at the time it was the recent change of introducing, you know, medical marijuana into Missouri and trying to legalize right. uh, recreational marijuana. And so I wanted to write my persuasive paper on that, right? Right. She goes... Well, that's a little too controversial. Why don't you save that for your senior year? And I was uh, like, okay, fine. I had literally like six sources going for and against, you know, met recreational marijuana. I was, right. I just wanted to talk about it. But then she let one of the girls talk about um, abortions. Yeah. And I was like, I'm sorry, but I thought that was more controversial than recreational marijuana. And she let the girl write her whole persuasive essay on abortions and i was like okay like okay, again okay. to each their own but right that's just well, kind of like blatant like hatred towards me yeah that was a very blatant favoritism when you get right down to it oh, like i know i've told you about this before but um yeah. for the people that have never heard the story she we had a uh greek mythology test right and i am a great i love history and so greek mythology plays a big part to history because it also reveals something like fantasy world right and so exactly. we were talking about things and i i had read the book already and so i knew basically most of the answers on the test i was supposed to get like a 96 or something like that or yeah. actually i think on that test i got 100 because again it's greek mythology and i love greek mythology well yeah, yeah. my buddy ronnie and i um, when we sat down at lunch, I was like, dude, I don't know how I got points off for this, this, and this. And he's like, well, what, what were the questions? And he's like, I told him the questions and I told him my answers. And he goes, that's strange because that's like the exact same answers I gave. And I got full points for each of those questions. So, huh. I, and the thing is she let us take our tests like with us and I compared our answers and I legit was just like, there's not really a big difference between our answers. Like the wording is a little bit hmm. different. But the main points of our answers are the exact same. Right. So I was like, I went up back up to my teacher after lunch, and I was like, so I, I talked to Ronnie, and I kind of compared answers with him because I was like, you know, I thought this is what we had talked about in class, and he had the same answers for me, and he got the points, and I didn't. And she goes, oh, well, I guess I'll have to go back and change that now. I was like, so you know that you gave me the... I was like, so you know for a fact that you took away points when you didn't need to. I was like, yeah, uh -huh. you're going to give me full fucking points for that question. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, yeah. I was so pissed off, dude. I was like, this just makes me so mad. Oh. Yeah. Well, you see, this uh, also just kind of goes to prove the point that um, trying to rectify years of uh, suffering and abuse by enacting se um, the same on the other side doesn't work right it's not right it's just as bad when you get right down to it it was just it i don't know why she didn't like me that much i legit didn't do anything i i i okay i did do i did start trouble um but only after she blatantly started showing her hatred towards me right. then i started causing trouble and i was like screw that i ain't i'm not letting you get off easy now like, there will be there will be pain. There will be trouble if I'm going there to be hated be. for no reason. So at one point, I decided to print off... I tried printing off 999 copies of my four-page paper, and I only got through uh, copy number 50 before someone stopped the printer. Yeah. 
And I was like, oh my god. Wh I forgot blah blah you know and i i was trying to bullshit some answers and yeah. i was like i hope she gets in trouble for all the copy paper <laughs> going missing in this and i did that multiple times every time i went to the computer lab because i was like fuck this if you're gonna hate me i'm gonna cause you trouble uh, don't get on my bad side <laughs> right and it's like don't piss somebody off for no reason whatsoever it right just is not a good idea if you hate me you can have any reason to hate me as long as you have a reason if you're gonna hate me for no reason, then I will, I will cause trouble. I will wreak havoc. Dude, I remember, I remember whenever I got a, had just gotten into high school, I was excited for one reason and one reason only: the fact that they had a computer lab. Ooh. I tried for four, all four years that I was there to get into computer lab. Even as a senior, when I, whenever you're supposed to have the pick of your classes and everything like that. Right. I never got it. What? I n never understood why I never got it, but I never got it. All the, um, any and all the skills that I've got with computers at this point in time are completely self-taught. Damn, they should have just let you in. Oh, they should have, but they didn't. See, now we have, like, mandatory computer lab classes. Exactly. If I had just been born ten years yeah. later, I would have been fine. But no. The world does not shine light on Nito sometimes. We don't like it... that. <laughs> ah, well. And not much you can do about it now. And not much I can do about my teacher hating me now. Exactly. Ugh. Oh, so but my... They do make oh, for yeah. some fun stories, though, I gotta admit. Yeah, they, they <laughs> definitely cause a lot of good memories and bad memories at the same time. Like, I liked high school. And I, I, I understand why people didn't like high school. But my high school really wasn't, like, a, a shithole. It was... Now, don't get me wrong. There was a lot of people in my high school that would act ghetto, and there's, okay, there's not really ghetto, you know, around our high school. So I didn't, yes. I didn't understand what was going on, and the kids that were, you know, acting this way, they're like, well, I, I grew up, you know, near Fort Zumwalt. I go, that's a good school. Yeah. That's a, that's, those are all good neighborhoods. What are you, where is your struggle? What are you talking right. about? You know, they're like, just gotta, you know, just gotta hustle through the struggle, and I was like, that makes no sense. Yeah, it I was like, doesn't dude, make any sense when you're not struggling. I was like, with. your parents make good wages, you live in a nice house, you have a car, you have a job, you got friends, you got a girlfriend, you're on the football team, where is your struggle? <laughs> so I was like, maybe it's mental stuff. No, nah, they're, they were all yeah. fine. They all, they're all good. I was like, okay. So I don't, I don't get where the, uh, the struggle is for a lot of the high school kids that I went with, but I, I genuinely liked high school. It was a fun time for the most part. I enjoyed everything besides, you know, bullshit work. I hate doing busy work. Yeah, I hear you on that. So, like, now that I'm in community college, it's a lot easier because I don't have, you know, eight classes that all give me busy work. I usually just have one class that sometimes gives me busy work. Right. And so it's it's a lot easier. And that busy work is something that you can generally do on your own. I'm at your own pace, which is cool. Right. Like, the busy work takes me no time at all. So, like, for one of my classes this past semester, I had seven assignments a week. And for another one, I had six. And, oh. you know, it sounds like busy work, but it most of it was because I was going over basic stuff like PowerPoint and Microsoft Word, Excel, Access, all that kind of stuff. But right. the main thing about it was the busy work still taught you new things. I was like, well, I didn't know I could do this, or I didn't know I could do this, you know? Yeah. And it would only take me up most of, like, 30 minutes to an hour to do each one. And that was if I was really procrastinating each right. step. But I was like, you know, there's not really anything wrong with, you know, what's going on. I was fine with this busy work. But in high school, it's yeah. more like, fill out this eight-page packet after you watch this hour-long video, then present your answers to the class. And I'm like, what is this shit? Why? 
it's like they're purposefully getting you ready for bureaucracy when you get right down to it. Yeah. Ugh. And, it, and there was no creativity in it or anything, and it, it bothered me. Yeah. And so, like, I really like math. Like, I, I'm decent at math, so generally I kind of go towards it more. So, right. you know, I did pretty good in my math class at, at my community college. I did fairly decent in math all four years at high school in high school and everything, or three years. I dropped out my senior year. Not out of, out of high school, but out of my math class. Right. Because I figured... I took the easy route, and instead of saying, oh, well, if I get the college credit, like if I pass the test at the end of the semester, then I can get the college credit. I said, well, why don't I just take the class in college and get the college credit there, not have to risk not take not getting the credit in high school, and it's right. easier on my schedule in high school. So I did that, and oh my god, it was worlds better, because, you know, again, with the busy work, it sucks. So the math class right. had a summer packet like most of your AP or college classes do um, right. when you're in high school. And so what ended up happening was that um, it, it was a like a 12-page packet, and each page was filled to the brim with questions. And it was over several different units, and you had to answer every question before the first day of school. So in the middle of my summer, I said, screw that, and I dropped the class. And... Um, I decided that I was just going to take it at SCA. Well, when I got to SCA, my community college, I took the class, and the class covered everything in the packet, but at a ah. slower pace, and actually yeah. made it so that I didn't have to rush through it in the middle of the summer. Exactly. Oh, man, and that is the big problem with um, advanced classes and whatnot. They just... Uh, it's not... It doesn't uh, the way that the uh, the way that they try to structure it just doesn't make any sense. I mean, like you're asking someone who's younger and yes, does show a talent and ability in the area, but at the same time, you're asking them to go ahead and do it at an accelerated rate. Right. That's not the way that you, the way that you just basically get someone to go okay, I'm just going to go ahead and blaze through this and hope for the best and not get anything out of it. Right. It just, it just made no sense to me. Yeah. Like, I wasn't going to learn anything from that packet. Right. Not you would have spent a good chunk of your summer, which you could be using to do any number of other things that are infinitely more important to you. Right. Well, I then proceeded to use that summer to not really do a whole a whole lot anyway, but Oh yeah. There's always that option too. Yeah. I'm just glad I didn't take that, you know, class. Cuz yeah, it would it would have it would have been hell on my schedule. Right, you would have driven yourself slowly mad. Well, maybe not slowly mad. It's an accelerated class, so I'm guessing the madness would probably here, hold on. Your mic's cutting out. Uh oh. Uh oh. Wait a second. Am I still here? Yeah. Okay. All right. It's all, all good. Right. It just it sounded like you're like diving into the depths of hell real quick. <laughs> oh, dude, I'm betting uh, my bit rate must have di um dove into yeah. the uh, Stygian depths at that yeah. point. It, it must have been the bit rate because that shit happens to my recording sometimes. Yeah. It's all good. We gotta take into exactly. We gotta take into consideration the fact that we're using a free service for this too. Exactly. So, yeah. We're not gonna. We're never gonna doubt on a free service, folks. Exactly. I mean, like, dude, we uh, we love you, Discord. We really do. <laughs> and I'm gonna say this in all honesty. I am glad that you did not allow yourselves to be bought by Microsoft because. It's so much. Oh, the mic's dipping out again. Ah, I bet you I know why. Is it Manny? Oh, it's Manny, but <laughs> at also at the same time, the longer the spiel, the 
more data rate. Oh, it's like the more than oh, I'm taking off. That, that makes sense. sense. That makes a lot of sense to me. Because like that's how my um that's how my I think that's what was happening to my mic actually. So you know when I had that problem where eventually it would get really quiet? Yeah. I think that's what was going on because I it only ever happened after like 30 or 40 minutes. And it was it was accurately 30 to 40 minutes after I started recording each and every time. And so I think my computer just couldn't keep up with it. So eventually it was like, oh, to lessen this, we're going to, like, to lessen the, the uses of your CPU, we're going to, you know, lower your sound and your right. mic. But no, it's not the CPU, because I am familiar with the CPU. It is definitely on the side of their servers. Ah, uh, that makes more sense to me then. Of course, the ISP has something to do with it, but, you know, at the same time, not as much because we are utilizing a free server right i just think it's very very important that people realize that everything that we're doing here is to be as cost effective as possible so you know in the future we may do you know face cams with these podcasts but for the time being i'm going to be kind of cheap and not do that uh yeah and depending if I can get my hands on a free camera or a cheaper camera, you know, there's it's possible, but we can always also I'll find a way or something like that to animate something to appear on screen, you oh, know. Dude, yeah, and to tell you the truth, I think that route would probably make more sense because that won't add any um, issues as far as bandwidth is concerned. Yes, bandwidth and just recording like simplicity. So like yeah. I, I had a problem with originally trying to do Audacity separate than my OBS, and yeah. so that was really causing me problems. And I didn't really understand why for a little while. So it was just way too complicated trying to put the audio file for my Audacity into the recording with my OBS and keep the gameplay, but not get the mic from the game. Like it was, it was just so much at the start. So I just decided to do it all with OBS, which works out for me now. You know. Right. Only sometimes, though. <laughs> I Plus, e. you had teeth. Uh, you had growing pains, as far as that's concerned, too. Yeah. I e. Um, for everyone that doesn't know, my last video that I put out on YouTube just got copyrighted. Um, by the way, again, oh. forty-eight subscribers. I'm a small YouTuber. I'm not monetized. So, for YouTube, or not for YouTube, but for the music shareholders to have that copyrighted on my channel, it's just kind of funny to me because they're like, if. Like, any monetization will go to, you know, this person. And I was like, okay, that's fair. Whenever I do get monetized, they can get the profits <laughs> off of that. But for time exactly. being, they won't even get anything from me. So I get to use their shit for free because it's not a strike against my channel. It's just that one video. Yay! Yay! We love YouTube! Thank you, YouTube, oh, for yes. not striking my channel down. Oh, man. Dear Lord, the almighty algorithm, I think, <laughs> since it's mostly hands-off, it is always going to be a matter of, okay, this problem pops up, it's going to take a while to fix it, meanwhile, everybody's going to be exploiting said thing. Yes. There you go. Like, I, I mean, example, like, with the spiffing Brit, he yes. showed an exploit of how to get infinite likes on your videos. Um, for people that don't know, I would, I would highly recommend checking out a YouTuber named The Spiffing Brit. Where He's good at breaking stuff. Yes, very good at breaking stuff, finding exploits in games or on YouTube and websites. So he basically used an auto clicker to click the like and dislike video so rapidly that it would generate likes on a video, but the video wouldn't have to have the same amount of views. And so the video could have one view and have 30,000 likes, which would then put it on people's feeds because it has a very good like-to-dislike ratio. <laughs> what, um, and unfortunately, what the cats at YouTube had not thought about was the fact that when um, most of their subscribers, per se, are on phone, which basically means it adds an entire layer of delay. And since they did not take that into consideration you have that issue yeah it 
YouTube doesn't really take a lot of things into consideration, <laughs> to be completely honest. Yep, but we also have to remember the simple fact of the matter is they are a bunch of things that are as possible with people and um, trying new things all the time. And unfortunately, trying new things all the time means that you're going to have headaches all yeah. the time. Trust me, I, I know that all too well. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because editing Dude. and recording is a learning curve. Exactly. And I have to tell you the honest truth, even if you do follow... Oh, hold on, you're dipping out again. Oh, okay. All right, you're back. All right. If one actually even follows all the rules and regulations that go along with the use of music and or videos in your YouTube video, you will, at some point in time, come across and be um, copyright, um, copyright stricken simply because of the algorithm, not necessarily because somebody's on the other end going, <laughs> Right. I just really appreciate the YouTubers that don't care about the copyright stuff. And they're just like, oh. just cut. they're like, I don't need this. Like, I do this for fun. And that's how I am right now. Because, like, YouTube is more of a joy than, obviously, a moneymaker. Because I'm not making money off of it. Right. Unfortunately, we had PewDiePie. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Uh, PewDiePie will get every strike on his channel possible. And I, I kind of love that. <laughs> yeah, I gotta admit, he is, um, he's a shithead, but he's a fun shithead. He is a fun shithead. He, he's what makes doing YouTube partially enjoyable, because you get to see someone else do shit to annoy YouTube so that you don't have to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Although I do have to admit, I did stop watching this. On yeah, and I did unsub um, unsubscribe from him because I didn't really appreciate some of the stuff that he was saying. But you know, I fully get that. It, but he, it's him. He does him, and that whole point. Let him do him. If I don't like his stuff, I just don't watch it. Right. And, but some people can't be like that. Some people are like, well, if I don't like it, nobody can like it. <laughs> exactly. I mean, like, I could have been one of those guys that's going, okay, I'm sensing some racial undertones in what you're saying and everything like that. You're a racist. Now everybody needs to know that you're a racist. And I need to make sure that... I perceive you as so and so. Oh my gosh. Some people just can't have any fun in this world, but we're not going to worry about those people because we're going to worry about ourselves because fuck them. Yeah. Exactly. Tell you the truth, guys. If you got something to complain about, remember everybody has something to complain about. Yes. As long as it's not freaking poking you in the eye and causing you uh, real and honest to goodness pain, let it be. Like at work, I kind of just, <laughs> I kind of just stopped caring sometimes. Like I just, you know, because every manager is different, and there's a lot of managers that are not a lot of managers. There's a, a manager. Or two managers now that is very, that are very, um, more on the, like, rule-following side. Yeah. And I just, like, I'm, I'm a rule follower. I'll, I'll say that right now. Like, I'm not going to go out and break the rules just, just to break the rules. But sometimes right. it's easier for me to break the rules than it is for me to follow them. Right. And so at work, I just sometimes stop caring. <laughs> So they'll tell me to do something, and everyone's else, everyone else is just like, why don't you just say no or fight back? I'm like, what's the point? Why would I fight back? Because it's only going to get me in trouble, you know? Right. I won't get written up because, yet again, since the GMs are the only ones that can technically write people up, 
as far as I remember, from being told by Christina and Greg. Right. Uh, um, but they kind of like started to take away more and more power from the actual managers. But like, yeah. I just kind of leave, leave it be. There's no point in fighting. Right. It's not like they're asking you to, you know. Wait, hold on. Like what was that last part? Um, it, um, it's not like they're asking you to out your heart and serve it to them. Ah, uh, yeah, they, they aren't they aren't asking for my heart on a platter. What they are asking me to do is clean up the mess that they make. <laughs> yeah. And That's my least favorite. That. I, I hate um, cleaning up after grown-ass adults when you get right down to it. There's no reason for uh, it. They need to be able to clean up after themselves. My least favorite, one of my least favorite days of working with this one manager was the fact that after I had been cleaning my area and stocking, right, and we had gotten a rush, I was just cleaning again. And I was told to sweep underneath the food line. And I was like, okay, that makes sense. It's a fucking mess back here. So I clean under the line. Now, we had only been working on one side of the line. The other line was not dirty. Manager goes over there, makes her own food, and then asks me to clean up the mess. And I look over, and I, I legit wipe the cheese into the little thing that catches all the food, right? That we're supposed to, that's where the, the food that is messy is supposed to go. And then she was like, well, you need to sweep. And I look at the floor, and there was not a single thing. There was not a single thing. And I was like, the floor is okay. And then she wipes off some of the crumbs and, like, cinnamon twist onto the floor. She's like, well, you need to wipe that off. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Are oh, you? I was like, you serious? And I got, I got mad. I was just like. But that's not the mess that I made. That I, no one else made the mess besides you. And she's right. like, she's like, well, you, I need you to sweep it up. And I'm like, fucking uh, fine, whatever. I don't care anymore. And so like, that was like the last breaking point. I'm like, you're gonna single me out every time from now on. And I understand that. And she does. She still singles people out, including me. And I'm just like, there's no yeah. point to fighting with her because it's, nothing will change. True. This is true. And then there's some other managers that, at, for a little while, they care. And then when shit hits the fan, they're like, yeah, fuck it. I don't do what you need to do. I don't care. And I'm like, you're a good manager. Right here. This is a good manager. <laughs> exactly. I mean, like, dude, don't sweat the small stuff when you're actually being able to get what needs to be done done. Yeah. Like, right. You know, and, just, and it is also one of those things where it's like, okay just after a rush you've had to deal with this crap for a while without a break you finally have a break and you're cleaning up like a nice person but you're also taking something of a break mm -hmm. okay now don't tell that person who's been working in the rush without a break and everything who's doing what they're supposed to be doing to do something else for you for no real good reason. Yeah. It's just going to piss them off. Right. I mean, like, if we're going to speak on, on things that bug us at work, if I've got one thing about a certain cat who will wait until he's clocked off. Oh, my God. <laughs> and then basically order a bunch of special food. And have us make it for him. And the funniest thing about it is, he usually won't, you know, take the was it employee discount or anything like that. He pays for it normally, yeah, full and price. stuff like that. Full price, but it's all special. I mean, like he knows darn well how much of a pain in the butt that type of thing is. Yeah. And he'll just go ahead and do that. And, and it, when he can darn well make that food the exact way that he needs it made himself using just a few minutes, and chances are if he makes it himself, he's not going to have to pay for it. Right. 
And it's it, it used to upset me more because like right now he's kind of shrinking his order. So now it's still like, you know, six to eight items, right? And yeah. most of it, and people out there are going to be like, oh, okay, he's fe- no, 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 he's not feeding anyone else. It, this is for him. Right. And we, we have confirmed it. He used to order like 18 items. And now people need to keep in mind, this guy works like five days a week. Like, five days a week, and he does this every day. Right. He definitely... De- I mean, the simple fact of the matter is, he works enough where if he just goes ahead and puts in a little bit of effort for his own food, he can do it himself to the best of his ability for free. Right. Honestly. And not tick off the food makers that had just been in a rush because... the. Honestly, the time that he usually gets off is the time that the rush of uh, you just ended the rush. It just it, it makes me so mad because I'm like, why wouldn't you just make it yourself? It's going to be better because you know exactly how you want it mm-hmm. and free because you don't have to pay for it. You get like what they say is you get eight dollars at the, at the end of each shift and that's your employee meal but if you just make your food and go no manager is going to stop you no manager is going to be like hey you didn't ring that up because they don't care right as long as you're not feeding an entire flipping household every single day you're gonna it's not a problem we uh, the food that goes into the food traps online I mean, like, goodness gracious, that's pounds and pounds. Of like, food. literally, like, the, the heaviest I've ever weighed it, it felt like it was 10 pounds. And that was just right. all, like, lettuce and cheese and that kind of shit, like, chips. And I was like, it, the shit felt heavy as fuck. And I was like, this is so much food going to waste every single day. Well, of course, I'm not going to use it, you know. But, like, it's the equivalent to how much food he makes. And so... Right. It bothers me because then he just sits out in the lobby waiting for his ride. And I'm like, his ride won't show up for like another 10 minutes. And I'm like, you had every possible second to make your food. And you decide to sit out there and not do it. You know how to make the food. You can make the food. And you're not even going to take the discount. Why not take the employee discount, which gives you half off on your food? Because you are a Taco Bell worker. I mean, like to tell you the truth and just bear with me on this. He's probably um, working on this from an angle of, dude, I did just work an entire day, and I want the stuff the way I want it, but I did work just an entire day. I don't really want to make it, but, you know, so, and to make up for the fact that I'm making somebody else make it for me, I'm going to go ahead and pay full price. I can see that logic working up in his head. See, I see that. But the problem is, I don't think that's how it is. <laughs> oh, it, that's just it. It's not how it is. And I mean, like, in all honesty, the dude is actually a nice and sweet fellow. Yeah. When you get right down to it. He just does one thing that pisses us all off. <laughs> yep. He's a really nice guy. He's got nice... He, he does a little bit of singing for us in the mornings and everything. And he's yeah. a nice guy. But he just does that one thing. And I cannot stand it. Uh, I don't know, maybe to tell you the honest truth, and this is something that I guess I should probably go ahead and do, is, you know, come up to him and explain the whole thing. Explain the logic that we've got behind that, and uh, explain the logic that I think he has, and see if, uh, you know, maybe a light bulb pops on. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. We've we've confronted him before about making his own food. Like, legit, a couple of us have before. And we were like, okay. you know, Dante, you know, you can make your own food, and it'll most likely be either half off or free, you know, and it'll probably be exactly the way you want. And he's like, oh, okay. And he did it for one shift, and then he never did it again. And I was like, all right. Uh, oh. So I guess this is just not going to be a thing that changes. And it just hasn't yeah. been. So I, I don't know what to do from this point, because it's like, we could continue to bring it up to him, but I don't think yeah. it would change the matter of fact of he does what he wants. Right. Which, again, it's all fine. Do what you want to do. I, I Exactly. I couldn't care less. It's fucking Taco Bell. 
Right, and he really isn't, uh, and he really isn't causing anybody any pain or anything like that. It's just really flipping annoying. That's yeah. all. Anyone that has coworkers out there that annoy them, please leave them in the comments below because I would love to hear some stories of shit that happens at work. Oh, seriously. Because we have plenty of stories. Like, I I will give one of my most famous moments at at our Taco Bell. I had been working there for probably about four months at this point, and I had been working some mornings, and they said, hey, why don't you do a drop? And I said, okay. And then a drop just includes of putting all of our frozen or thawed stuff into a rethermalizer to heat it up and put it on the food line so then people can eat it, um, including like beef, nacho cheese, that kind of stuff. They said, well, why don't you drop, you know, six nacho cheese? Now, I had been really tired that morning, and I went to the walk-in. I had grabbed the beef that I needed, and I grabbed what I thought at the time was six bags of nacho cheese, and put it all the retherm. Lo and behold, thirty oh. minutes later, they they go, okay, let's pan up the drop, and you know we're panning up the beef. Everything's looking all good. We go to pan up the nacho cheese, and they open up the bag, and they're like, "What the fuck happened to this?" And then someone like looks at the bag and touches it a little bit, and they're like. Michael, come here. And I was like, wait, did I do something wrong? And they're like, this is eggs. <laughs> I had dropped I had dropped six bags of eggs. And these are like, probably like a half a gallon sized eggs. Yeah. And I had dropped six. So I had dropped three gallons of eggs, basically. <laughs> Which, at this point, it was noon. And we stopped serving breakfast at 11. So we called our manager, our GM at the time, and we were like, so here's the story, here's what happened, and she was like, just throw them away. She's like, we're not going to save them for the next morning, just throw them away. So we threw we threw six bags of eggs away, and we had to drop six bags of nacho cheese, and I was like, I, I have the video of it still, where they're, like, they see my face and how disappointed I was in myself. <laughs> from absolutely fucking up the the cost of the store because then we were six bags of eggs short. Oh yeah. Those are cheap. Oh. Yeah, they're not cheap, and we go through a lot of eggs when we served breakfast. Because yes. just about every breakfast item had eggs, so not my finest moment. Ah, uh, but we all have them. Yeah. I, re I remember one point in time on an overnight, uh, I had accidentally, well, yeah, the, <laughs> I spilled an entire pitcher of bun water down Ooh. the front side of myself. Y Let's Ouch. just say, now, for those of you that aren't familiar, uh, bun wa uh, it's like bun water, it comes from a bun machine. And that machine superheats water to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So I unfortunately poured an entire pitcher, three quarts, no, sorry, four quarts of hot water down my front side. Let's just say that I was not a happy camper. That's miserable. Oh, tell me about it. Oh, I was lucky that I did. Yeah, I was lucky that I didn't come out of that with any um, crazy burns because I mean like you do the uh, it's like you pour a whole bunch of hot water on you so you get to see exactly how quickly you move yeah <laughs> trust me people like you do not want that shit on you like Ooh. now I want I want you guys to to know the bun water goes in just about each of our products so yep. we make our red sauce with the bun water we make our chili with the bun water we add bun water to our rice and refried beans right if something looks dry on the hot side of the food i.e chicken steak beans beef you name it any of it besides the rice okay we add bun water so we yeah. add 200 degree fahrenheit water to any of these products just to reheat them and to like moisten them up right so when that shit touches you it burns fucking a lot so oh yeah I have a scar on my right arm, my right forearm, from our red sauce. Ooh. An actual scar, because the red sauce is made with 200 degree Fahrenheit water, so yep. it stays around 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And if that, like, I'm not even joking, when I had accidentally 
bit I was trying to put nacho cheese into a cup and I had hit the wrong pump. So it splattered in the cup and then put onto my arm. Yep. And it was there for less than two seconds before I like I didn't have any reaction. I was just like, oh wow. I legit just said, oh wow. I didn't scream or anything, didn't move fast. Picked up a one of the wraps for the tacos or something and wiped it off my arm. And I could see that a giant circle of my skin had peeled off. Had it been there for any longer, and it could have gone, like, legit exposed the complete insides of my wrist because of how hot that shit is. So for the next three weeks to, like, a month or two, which, by the way, I was going on vacation to the ocean, so I had to put on, like, a bunch of Band-Aids and shit to cover that shit up, I had this giant-ass scar, and it's still there, you know, a year later. It's not as visible. But it is still definitely there. So, yeah, you don't want that kind of shit on you. Nope, not at all. The only thing that can possibly be worse, and you know exactly what I'm talking about, nacho cheese. Oh. That's like napalm at that point in time because the consistency, I mean, like, it just sticks to whatever it splatters on. Yeah. So, uh, imagine... That he did with red sauce, only with nacho cheese. And if you don't move fast enough, even if you. Hold on, you cut out. I'm sorry, it's like. Back. Regardless of how fast that you move, it sticks to you. Yeah. I've actually, at one point, depending on how hot the nacho cheese is, it will burn through the gloves. Easily. I, I've had nacho cheese burn through my gloves, like, and onto my hands, multiple times. And I've yeah. been, I've only been there for two years, compared to, you know, some of our workers that have been there for longer. But, like, imagine how many times that happens to me, and then multiply that more and more, you know, for some other workers. But, like, when that stuff is out, so when you... When you pump the nacho cheese, eventually the bag runs out of nacho cheese. And so then it's, it goes pop, and it Splat. pops, and it splatters everywhere. And so it goes all over your clothes, and now you've got yellow stained cl like clothes. It looks like you pissed on your own apron. Oh, or did some other things with your apron. Um, <laughs> but if it, hits your, if it hits your skin, you need to immediately like grab wraps and start washing it off with cold water, because if not, you are going to leave a a burn mark for a little while. And nah. I am the solid reason that we have burn cream and multiple packs of band-aids and stuff like that at our Taco Bell because I've hurt myself so much there. I hold the cake for like most notable injuries. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh. It just it makes oh me my... laugh because it's like before that I go why do we not, I was like, why do we not have burn cream? We work with grills and hot water and all this other shit. And thank God one of our managers at the time had actual burn cream. She's like, yeah, this shit happens to me all the time. So I keep it around. It's like, geez. Oh, goodness. It sounds like Manny found someone. <laughs> sing to. Yep. We'll have to have a whole episode where Manny sings to the audience. Oh, yeah. He's got a wonderful and loud voice. <laughs> for, for for people that don't know, Manny is Nito's cat. He is not <laughs> he is not just some random guy that Nito has in his apartment that's just singing to people. Um, but Manny is Nito's cat. He's a magnificent black cat with just a little bit of attitude. Um, well, yeah, a little bit of attitude. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the story you were telling me about how you got caught between the door and the outside when Manny was trying to leave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and how Manny just immediately started attacking you because you were in his way. Yep, that was some craziness right there. Uh, man, I, it was... Well, he was also trying to get at the cat that was on the outside. Yeah. And, well, let's just say he, he was... Defending his territory, and, you know, you got all those hormones pumping and everything like that, and <laughs> the second that I'm going, okay, now you got to move. I made I made the mistake. I made yeah. the mistake, and I definitely paid for that in spades. <laughs> e 
chomped my uh, he chomped my thumb, uh, and then he chomped the inside of my leg right where it connects to my buttocks. Yeah, you came oh my you came back goodness. into work bleeding from your thumb. Actually, I remember that. Yeah, that was just wow. You know, I mean, like the those teeth and claws that they have are not just for show. Yeah. But he did go. Uh, he did almost literally um, bend over backwards to apologize afterwards. It was so sweet. <laughs> Animals are very cute. And speaking of defending territory, you know, my sister just got a new dog. Um, his oh. name is Queso, and for people out there, full name is Queso Lupa, which is <laughs> it's it's whatever. It's it is what it is. But she got a new dog, and. The dog is actually the same breed, the exact same breed as my two dogs. Um, uh, she's a uh, Bichon Shih Tzu mix, or Bichits, um, if you want to give it the nickname. And so my dogs, Lady and Lewis, are almost four. And my sister actually got her puppy from the same mother of our two dogs. And it's kind of funny to watch how our two dogs will... Lewis and Lady will bark and snap at bigger dogs. Like, they're going to pick a fight. So, like, the other day we took him to a park, and Lewis just snapped at a big dog. We didn't let him bite or anything. And we immediately, like, we're just like, what the fuck, dude? Like, no, no fucking snapping at a big dog. You're going to get killed. But then when it came to this small puppy, who, mind you, is, like, 13 or 14 weeks old now, or, you know, 13 to 15 weeks old, I have a video of this puppy just chasing after Lewis and Lady, and Lewis and Lady running for their fucking lives. And this puppy, <laughs> this puppy just wants to sniff and play. Like, she, he, he's got no problem. Queso is just like, hey, I'm over here. And Lewis and Lady were like, we took him out in the backyard to introduce him to Lewis and Lady, right? And Queso's yeah. just laying there, just looking at him, and just like, just sniffing. And Lewis and Lady are like, trying to sniff him without getting close, and every time Queso moved his head, they jumped backwards. Because they were that terrified. And he's tiny. I was like, you guys make no sense. You defend your territory against the wrong sized dogs. Yeah. I was like, maybe they smell like the mother scent on the dog still. So they see it as one of them. Which makes sense because they are technically siblings. Yeah. Or half siblings or whatever it is. But I was like, it's just it was just kind of funny to watch because this this small cute puppy was chasing around my dogs, and they were running for their lives. Like, I'll just show you next time I go. I'll just send you the video. Most definitely, because that does sound absolutely hilarious. Oh, my goodness. Small dogs, that always, always blew my mind how um, small dogs will take on something that is ten times their size. Yeah. Without batting an eyelash. But they're scared of things their own size. It's like, give them a squirrel. It's like, oh my god! Oh my god, don't even get me started with the freaking rabbits in our backyard. Oh no. So, we have a lot of vermin on our property, right? All, right. Well, actually, our whole neighborhood does. So we have a mole problem as well. So, so much in the fact that the other day I saw one of the mole hills moving because the mole was digging, like right underneath. Oh yeah. And so my dogs, when they see a small rodent like that, they chased it like crazy. And my old dog, Teddy, used to. Like, I love that. I loved that dog so much before he passed away. And at one point, Teddy went on a murder spree. Ooh. He had gotten one of the baby rabbits and used it like a chew toy. And so I'm in the pool, right? And I hear yeah. squeaking. And Teddy had been, you know, probably around 13 at this point. Like, he was hitting the last years of his life. And... I was, right. I heard him, I heard him playing with what I thought was a squeaky toy because I legit heard squeaking and I'm like, oh, he's getting some of that like childish nature back. So I went, I got out of the pool to go take a look at him, just watch him for a second, you know, and yeah. I look at him and he's tossing a rabbit around, a baby rabbit, like it was a fucking chew toy, like legit, like he's going, Arr! and like he shakes his head and launches yeah. this rabbit at the fence <laughs> and picks it up. And I'm like, and I go down there, I'm like, Teddy. What the fuck, dude? I'm like, you have squeaky toys. Play with one of those. So we had to dispose of that rabbit. And then days later, we come outside to a rabbit that was being chased by Teddy. Teddy clawed one of his eyes and stretched out his back. 
And so we had to leave the rabbit where it was, and the mother would never come near it because it smelled like a dog. Yeah. And then this one still baffles me. No idea what the fuck happened to it. I'm not even going to lie. I, I, it could be literally anything because it was not my dog. So this rabbit had a perfectly circular skin patch on its stomach. When we found oh. it, it was lying straight up on its back, right? I wish I had taken a picture of it because it was so awkward to me. I remember this so vividly. It had a perfectly circular, like if you were to take a, like a, one of those pencil things that they use on maps, you could draw a perfect mm -hmm. circle and it would match. Like it had been shaved in a perfect circle. And there were four dots in its stomach. And not dots, I mean like holes. Perfectly oh. like spaced out between each other. In the middle of the circle. And I was like, no way my dog did that. No fucking way my dog did that. I was like, what the fuck caused this rabbit to die versus the other oh. two? Because I know it killed the other two, but this one shocked me because I, it legit, again, perfect circle, four holes in the middle. Like, if you can imagine yeah. that being on an animal or anything and having that be the cause of death, you would be like, oh, maybe it was in a lab. <laughs> they, like, shaved something and were poking and prodding at it. But no, right. like, backyard. And so Lewis and Lady, they've caught, I think, I think they've caught four or five rabbits now. Right. Anywhere from two to five rabbits. I know that. And, like, Lewis, I swear to God, scared the shit out of my family because at one point he's sitting on the back porch, happy as can be. Like, you could see that he had a smile from ear to fucking ear because he had a half of yeah. a dead rabbit in his mouth. And we're oh. sure, we're sure that either him or Lady ate the other half. Uh, and yeah. we were, and so my sisters, like, brought him inside by accident because they didn't see the rabbit in his mouth. And he just plopped it down in the middle of the fucking floor. <laughs> like, he was like, I brought you something. And then just exactly. plops it down. And I'm like, you're not a cat. You don't need to bring dead animals into the house. Especially after you brutally murder one like this. And he's done that multiple times. Like, he'll come in and he'll just have blood all over his face. And we're like, all right, now we got to go find the rabbit that's in the backyard. Somewhere in the backyard, there's a dead rabbit. And we need to clean it up before he gets back to it. Yeah. Oh, my. Well, maybe as he was getting older, he just basically started tapping back into his instincts. Yeah, all three of our dogs that we've had are massive rabbit killers. Oh. So, if you need someone to hire you to take some vermin out of your backyard, hire my three dogs. Or, well, my two dogs. One of them is dead. I am sorry to inform you of that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but oh, man. I, I think with that note, that's a... <laughs> That's a good spot to end the podcast right there. Talking about my my two alive dogs and my one dead one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Dear Lord. Sorry. I, didn't mean to take I'm a sorry. weird note there. <laughs> oh, I mean, like, dude, an even weirder note was I remember uh, from um, being a kid, uh, one of the little crazy sing-song things that they had was, uh, I'm looking over my... Dead Dog Rover. Dead. <laughs> it, it, and it's basically um, singing about um, having accidentally run over oh your my um, dog with a lawnmower. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly. Why? That's so brutal. <laughs> Who would have I that know. as a song? I, I know. I know. It's terrible. But it's one of those things that you know other kids were doing it it was a sing song type of thing and it was a heck of a lot uh air quotes cooler to be singing that <laughs> one than to be singing i'm looking over my four leaf clover yeah you know and it's like yeah, and it... so yeah <laughs> Blame, uh, blame it on uh, young boys trying to be gross. As Dude, that's know. that's going to be like stuck into my head now for the next week and a half. I'm sorry I'm about that. I'm looking over my dead dog rover. <laughs> God. Oh, well, went... I've done my part for uh, a basically transferring generational terror. Yeah. Oof. Until next time, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for joining Bye, us guys. on the Help We're Stuck in a Box podcast for this episode. Thank you, Nito, for showing up and being here. Well, thank you for putting up with my crazy butt. <laughs> All right. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>